And uh, thanks for choosing Morning Live, a very important issue to discuss now. Did you know that if you have a gun in your possession, that it's more likely to kill you or a family member? And because of home invasions, hijackings and muggings, many South Africans own a gun out of fear for falling victim to violent crime. But research shows that you are four times more likely to have your own gun used against you than to be able to use it yourself successfully in self-defense. And joining us now is uh, Tolwana Kobela, who is the Chief Strategy Officer at Communications Company, uh, Havas South Africa. Thanks so much for coming through this morning. Thanks, Akina. So first and foremost, you know, we talk about gun-safe um, cities, but... Given our reality, a, a reality of living in a city, you know, where violent crime is perhaps the norm. Uh, you look at what we see on social media. You look at what we uh, report in our news mm. broadcast. And it seems as though we've almost become accustomed to having this violence as a part of our lives. Uh, would you concur with that? Absolutely. And that's one of our single biggest issues, as you know, in South Africa is getting people. We need to ungun ourselves. But as socially, we have been so inured into guns and the gun culture, and it's almost become part of us. Now, given that, how do we start to get safe cities? And is it just a dream? Is it a pie in the sky? Maybe some would say that, but you, you've got to start somewhere. You can't just say it's too difficult, had enough, and give up. Um, and that's the way we approached it. So the statistics are quite scary mm. because... We do know that there is a lot of violent crime in South Africa. People actually arm themselves hoping that they would be able to use those guns to defend themselves mm. and defend their mm. families and their businesses or whatever it is they're trying to defend. Mm. And according to statistics, unfortunately, those very same guns that people take up for self-defense yeah. purposes end up being used against them. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, the issue of in-home safety or... Uh, actually holding gun safety is a major, major thing because it goes into where do you keep your gun? How do you keep your gun? There are at least two suicides a day in South Africa using guns. Let's, let's just process that. Um, then you have all kinds of other behaviors that do not help us in changing that whole thing. So what we can do in the way that we approached it was to wake people up into guns in, a, in an unusual way, in a slightly different way, knowing that uh, things have changed. We've got uh, young people, they consume, um, they consume digital media, all of that good stuff. So we came in at it from a slightly different angle. Let's talk about that, because how do you convince someone who now has a gun and, 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 and feels that somehow they are safer because of it? How do you convince them to give that up uh, to create a gun-free society? I think you are never going to have an absolute 100% gun-free society. I think that's what we are trying to do is to knock it back, to make people reconsider and rethink why it is that they have this gun. Now, the approach that we took uh, on it was kind of left a field. We went out and we found people who were gun owners and who are proud gun owners. It's, it is what it is. And then we also found people who were not gun owners. And we offered them all a free time on the range, on a gun range. They were given the training that was required. They were taken onto the range. They did their shooting, all of the, the normal things. Then the target comes back. That's where things get interesting because at the center of the target is their own picture. And all of a sudden, whether they were gun owners or whether they were not, all we got was, whoa, wow, that's different. Wow. So people have begun to rethink. And it's like, oh, okay, maybe that's actually me to the kind of uh, stats that you were talking about. So we are rattling the cage a little. I don't think w this is going to change overnight. But every effort has to be made to kind of make people rattle the chain a little. Mm. So, so, so uh, talking to the education, as you say, you take people out onto the range and, you know, I can just imagine i can see why that would be uh, such a daunting and even haunting experience if you have to have a target 
that is yourself mm -hmm. and the possibility of what could play out. But what else do you do in terms of, you know, conscientizing people I mean, about the dangers? Yeah, at the moment, that's basically what the key thing of what we're doing. We're looking for every single opportunity where we can take out these kind of educational messages that are not uh, conflict-driven and say you're a bad person, you own a gun. So it's really finding instances, and we haven't found many, where we can actually have decent talk and a, and a real conversation around how we handle this. So we're kind of going at it piece by piece by piece. It's a, we've got 54 million people in this country um, from a personal perspective. If I can get one gun owner to give up their gun, then I'm happy. And do you find that uh, beyond the initial shock, perhaps, uh, beyond the initial um, acceptance of your message, do people actually really go back and, and, and rethink this ownership of guns? It won't be in the first instance. I think that would be asking too much. I think if we're able to make them, I mean, if you see the film, the gun owners, the non-gun owners, they're horrified. Uh, because they can't see their own faces when the target is away. When it comes back, it's, the whole mood suddenly changes, and there's a little bit more of an understanding that, to your stats, mm -hmm. this thing could turn around and kill me. So, so, so um, beyond that, of course, and, and I'm thinking we may have some viewers who are sitting and watching this interview right now, and they're thinking, but, but why? But why would I want to give up my gun, uh, you know, in this crime-ridden society that we live in today. Like, is there a more compelling reason than what you have already mentioned for people to really consider this? Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's one of these really difficult things. Mm. You cannot change a person with one piece of communication overnight. There's no way. It has to come right from the beginning. It's a cultural thing. The kids, guns, you carry them, do you see them. Um, the first time I saw a gun was when I came in Joburg. I got the shock of my life. Somebody was wearing a gun openly. And getting people to see what that did to me and what they're saying about themselves to me and to the general population, all we can do is go piece by piece by piece. We will not be able to turn the lights off on this immediately. And mm -hmm. gun owners, look at your stats. It's horrible. Um, if I remember correctly, I think it, let me just get it right, I think it's five, no, I won't, I won't stat it because then I'll get it wrong. But if you look at the stats around, um, around uh, guns, they are scary, they really, truly are. So I'm not, we can't change them. We can change every single interaction when we talk about guns and really try and understand more of the guys that uh, hold those guns how they hold them, as well as people that don't have guns. Mm. Just looking at some of those stats uh, that you were referring to, according to the uh, Small Arms Survey, um, which is a weapons watchdog mm. organization, uh, they say that there are approximately 5,350 guns in a South African's possession. Mm -hmm. And we know that's, of course, you know... A little low. <laughs> uh, 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 and, but I suppose this is what they were able, uh, you know, to come across. And um, they go on to say that 57 people are killed in South Africa every day. And of those 57, 23 are as a result of gun violence. So the stats are really harrowing. So it's something worth looking at. But if someone is watching this interview right mm -hmm. now and they are convinced they'd like to get involved with your program mm -hmm. and maybe um, are starting to change their mind about mm -hmm. how they view guns, how do they get involved? Okay. The first thing to do is get hold of um, us at uh, Gun Safe Cities and then we can work together and see what you guys want how we can then, what the issue is designing around the people so that it actually answers to what they need. It's not about, here, fix. This is a box, and that's how you fix it. It's rather about working with people to find the best way. Um, what are we doing inside schools? Right from the beginning, um, relationship with guns and children. Uh, we know, uh, I think 5,000 is a little ambitious. I have mm. a feeling it's like 20,000 plus. Um, Getting it from the beginning, it's not a, you've got to, 
wow, it's guns surround us and violence and it's in our heads and we're, we're fear people. And we've got to get that fear out and it takes time and every little effort, I think, including ourselves, including yourselves, as you are, um, as a company, is just getting that message out, bang, bang, slowly, slowly. And that's the way uh, we look at it. Well, Talana, thanks so much for coming through and talking to us about this, a very, very important issue. And I think it's just worth going back and uh, reiterating where we started with this and what we were saying, if we could just go back to those stats about the reasons why people acquire guns to protect themselves, but then they end up being the victims. And you have one in four people getting killed with the, their own weapon the weapon that they thought yeah. they are buying to protect themselves yeah. and their families. So something that we really need to think about. And thanks so much to uh, Tolwana Kovela, uh, who is the Chief Strategy Officer at communications company um, Havas South Africa, for talking to us about why it is not safe to keep a firearm for personal or family reasons. And this given the fact that it is more likely to be dangerous to you, dangerous to your family, rather than protecting you. So let us know your views on that as well.